In this video, we'll show you how to implement a professional web dashboard on the ESP32 series of microcontrollers. Get any development board from the ESP32 series and connect it to your workstation. I'm using the Xiao C6 board based on ESP32 C6 microcontroller, which is a dual core X5 with 512K of SRAM, 4 megs of flash, Wi Fi 6, Zigbee, and BLE 5.0 support. This board has a built in temperature sensor and a user LED. Next, go to Mongoose.ws and click on the big blue button. This opens the interactive web dashboard builder. Select Create New Project and click Next. Choose an output directory. Select the ESP32 as an architecture and click Next again. Choose the empty dashboard, click Next, and then click Finish. Let's configure three pages, the Dashboard page, the Settings page, and the Firmware Update page. On the Dashboard page, let's show information cards displaying the device name, which we can customize, the current temperature measured by the built-in sensor and RAM usage statistics, total available RAM and currently used RAM. Each card references an API variable, which we'll configure shortly. Let's also add a panel for LED control. Set the toggle reference to LEDs.LED1 and mark it as autosave, so it would not need the explicit save button. On the settings page, Add a single panel for the configurable device name. Set the input field reference to settings.deviceName. On the firmware update page, add a panel for firmware updates. Use an upload button of type firmware update. We are done with the UI controls. Now let's configure the REST API endpoints that the UI controls are bound to. You'll notice in the info log that there are four invalid API references. This is what we are going to fix. First, add the firmware update endpoint to enable OTA functionality. Mongoose has a built-in OTA support for a variety of microcontrollers like STM32, NXP IMX RT, and others. ESP32 is one of the supported microcontrollers. So when we add this API endpoint, we automatically get a working firmware update functionality. The next endpoint is LEDs for LED control with a single attribute called LED1 of type Boolean. The next endpoint is settings with a single attribute device name of type string. Let's give it a default value of my device. Next, add the state endpoint. Mark it as read only and define the following attributes temperature of type double. RAM total of type integer and RAM used of type integer. Notice that one of the cards has a typo in its variable reference. It says state.used instead of state.ram used. Let's fix that. Now the dashboard design is complete. Click on the generate button. The Mongoose wizard creates the ESP32 project code in the output directory. Go to that directory and open the readme file to see the build instructions. We're going to use Docker to build the firmware. It'll take a little while to build. Open main slash main.c. We need to update the Wi Fi credentials. To do this cleanly, create a separate file called Wi Fi.h and define Wi Fi SSID and Wi Fi pass. Rebuild the firmware. Flash it using ESP tool utility. If it gets stuck, add the minus minus no dash stub flag. Flashing should then succeed. Reboot the board and attach a serial console to see the boot logs. Copy the IP address the board received from DHCP and open it in the browser. Now you can see the dashboard exactly as we designed it in the wizard, but served by the ESP device itself. Notice that the LED toggle currently does nothing and all displayed values are mock values served by default callback functions defined in mongoose slash mongooseglue.c. The next step is to override those default callback functions with our own so that all REST API endpoints and therefore all UI controls interact directly with our ESP32 device. You're watching the Mongoose channel. Mongoose is a network stack for embedded devices. 
with just two files, mongoose.c and mongoose.h. It includes a TLS stack as well. If you are building a professional web UI dashboard for your device or need to connect to an MQTT server, click the link below this video. Let's start with the LED control defined by the LEDs endpoint. In main.c, add two functions, my get LEDs and my set LEDs, which read from and write to the respective LED GPIO. Add the necessary headers for GPIO API, internal sensors, and persistent flash storage. After Mongoose init, add a snippet that initializes the GPIO in input output mode, and also add the call to Mongoose set HTTP handlers to replace the default LEDs handler with our own. Next, let's override the state endpoint, create a temperature sensor handle, add a myGetState function that treats the temperature sensor, total RAM, and used RAM values. After Mongoose init, initialize the temperature sensor and call Mongoose set HTTP handlers to set up our own state handler. Finally, the settings endpoint. We want to store device settings persistently in Flash. Add a persistent storage handler. Implement two functions, myGetSettings and mySetSettings, which read from and write to our settings structure. We have only one member there, a string called device name. We can either store the whole structure at once or each member individually. In this case, we store and read each member individually. After Mongoose init, initialize non-volatile storage and register our own handlers using Mongoose set HTTP handlers. Rebuild the firmware. This time, instead of flashing it manually, let's use the firmware update functionality. Open the firmware update page, click Update Firmware, and select the freshly built firmware.bin file. The upload takes several seconds. Once it's done, reboot the board. Now, when you open the dashboard, you'll see real hardware values. The device name persists from the previous runs. The temperature sensor reports around 38 degrees Celsius. Total RAM is about 396,000 bytes, and free RAM is around 305,000 bytes. The LED control works as expected. You can toggle the LED on and off directly from the dashboard. On the settings page, you can change the device name, reboot the board, and see that the new device name is saved permanently. Congratulations! We have successfully built a robust, professional-looking device dashboard in just a few minutes. Hit like and subscribe if you found this video useful, and see you in the next video.